Hi, welcome back to Get A Brood. So today I'm in the warehouse with warehouse supervisor Trevor. One of the things I want to show you is how we make our copper wood chillers. So the reason I'm showing you this is so you can see how we do it, but also if you're wanting to tackle doing this at home, it is doable at home. Now we have, we have a tool that's been made for us that allows us to roll the copper wood chillers and it comes in various sizes. So we've got this, this tool for making the small stove top copper wood chillers or our 10 litre chillers and it just attaches on to the tool the same way as the larger one here so we have the 20 litre chillers and also the 50 litre chillers and then we make chillinators as well which allows you to chill in a super quick time so Trevor's going to demonstrate how we do that in house so here's one of the finished products so you can see that we finish all of our copper wood chillers complete with hose lock connections and it's rolled on the tool that we've made now if you're wanting to make one at home can i suggest that you use something like a corny keg or a paint tin um, it's just ensuring that you get the roll started right um, is the key bit so making sure that the, the copper is molded around the circle before you start is really critically important so trevor if you want to show everybody here how we, sure. we do it at get a brew so we have on the tool we have a little piece of metal that catches just the, the end of the chiller once we've got that in place and um, what trevor's going to do is just take his time and really slowly rotate this around the tool so we've designed this in-house it's a little tool that we got a, a friend of ours made for us just to allow us to do these consistently so trevor many of these have we made in the last few months even about a thousand yeah so they're you know they're popular so we do um we use them as part of a kit for our brew in a bag kits for extract brewers. We also use them for um, our all grain brewers. So the brew monks would be the, this would be the chiller of choice for the brew monks and the bacon Even brewsters. And the pico boilers too. And the picos, yeah, so. You get about nine, 10 rows. This should be grand. If, if the coil's well looked after, the chiller, there should be no we haven't experienced anyone coming back to us saying that it went out of date or out of use. You know, we have found that this has consistently um, worked time and time again for all of our old grain brewers. So what Trevor's doing now, you're just taking a second cutting. Leave a bit of length so you can bend them up. If you want to create the swan neck with the two ends, so when you're rolling the coil you leave the yeah, lengths. leave it enough out the front and enough out the back, so when this one can go up, that one can go up as well. You know? Okay. Yeah, well, the, the idea behind the, using the, the circular cutter is that it gives it a nice clean level straight cut uh, because you're going to attach the, the little compression fittings on that allows you to attach the hose lock fittings to it. So this is the, like I, I can get to this bit easily enough. It's the, the bending up, it's the difficult bit. It looks easy until you try to use um, these little pipe benders. So Trevor and a couple of guys in the warehouse here are quick at it, whereas um, mine wouldn't be as pretty. You, you need pipe benders to do this at home um, because if you try to do it without the pipe benders, what you'll do is you'll kink the copper and then the water won't be able to flow collect correctly <laughs> through. You always want to keep it in an L shape. We're going to want this one to come up 90 degrees this way, and then this bottom one's going to have to come up 90 degrees this way, and then 90 degrees out the way. So keep it, always keep a wee tool at the bottom, always into the third slot, in between there. Bend it up to 90 degrees. So as you can see there, the, you know, if you had tried to bend that um, without a pipe bender, what would have happened? Would the pipe would have kinked on you? And then you wouldn't have got a flow. So we've got a nice good um, bend there on the copper coming up. Try this one. Very close. Do another 90 degree angle bend up. Nice, yeah. What I like to do to try and get it back into shape a wee bit is just use the edge of the table. Bend them in, just yeah. like that. Why is it key to have that bent back into shape? Like 
uh, just so it keeps its uh, circle, keeps it nice and neat, tidy, you know. Vis so visually, not... probably more than anything, um, I think it's nicer to have a, you know, like a nice uniform finish on it. I say so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to, I had to train the guys up. It was in yeah, here, so. Yeah, so. Uh, King of the pipe benders. King. <laughs> King of the pipe benders. Yeah. Uh, this is where you, you want to try and keep the height to come out of the kettle. Um, I've done it pretty long, so I sort of know exactly where it needs to be. I would go for about that adjustment. That gives you your, your bend out 90 degrees. And try and keep it about the same level again. And out at 90 degrees. Gives you two lovely so, bands out. But Trevor's doing doing these all the time, super quick and efficient at them. Um, you might want to, if you're making one at home, just slow the whole thing down a lot. What you know, when you started out, what tips would you give to people to, to do it successfully? Just take it slow. Um, try and when you're using the cutter, don't be pushing it in too much, or it'll crease the copper on you. It's very flexible. So it is the copper. I, I'd recommend just taking it slow and bending it easy. You, you get more confident over time bending the copper. So you do. It's a wee bit uh, tricky at the start, but you, you get the, you do get the swing of it. And then I would recommend just taking it easy with the cutter, or it'll be hard to get your brass fittings on at the ends and uh, get your nice clean cuts. I'm going to cut these wee bits down to size now so it's not sticking out too far, maybe about two inches, somewhere about there. You bring it out to there, and then just let it gently, gently go on, give it a first couple of spins, tighten it up as you go around. Uh, it's a wee bit tricky sometimes, that one in the way, but you just want to take your time doing this bit because it makes it a lot more easier when you're trying to get the fittings on. So when you're oscillating or turning that round, you're tightening every now and again? Every, just, just to do it by hand or a yeah. bit there, you know? Okay. Just like that. Same with the other one. Try and keep it about the same size as the first one. I recommend getting one of these pipe cutters as it leaves a very good clean cut. I wouldn't recommend using a hacksaw because you're going to leave shards and uh, wee bits and pieces in the pipe where the uh, pipe cutter leaves a nice fresh cut. Easier to fit your brass Impression fittings on, yeah. you know. Yeah. As I say, you make a nice clean cut, it should hopefully just slip on. Let's see, just as like that. So there's a little olive in those. Trousers. There's a little olive, like there is indeed a show. Show the camera little so olive. And that see. obviously when you compress the fitting together with the hex nut, it stops any leakages. And do you tighten? Do you tighten them once you've them on, or is yep. it hand tight? Or no, you tighten them up, but you don't want to tighten them too much, or you'll crease the piping and the oval nut, okay. the oval washer. Um, you want to make sure the copper is right down to the end of the. And what you want to do is you get your 22 and your 17 mil spanner. You hold with a 22 mil spanner. And then you use your 17 mil spanner just to give it a few turns, not too tight, or you'll crease it. You'll crease the copper and the oval washer. I just give it about that, just nice. I'll see him the other one, and I'll shoot them on tight enough to hold the water. We're going to use the the plumber's tape. We hold it back and wrap it on about five to seven times. Hopefully, it works the first time around. Then we just use a normal hose fitting for our, like your garden water top, and they just screw nicely on the, the brass compression fitting, and just tighten it up until it's hand tight. Nice. And that's the finished product. Okay guys, so that's how to make a copper ward chiller. Um, thanks so much to Trevor for showing us how to do that. If you have any questions on the process, you can um, put them in the comments below and we'll ask Trevor to, to answer you. So. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy brewing.